Hello, and today I'm going to go over another D&D 5e build that I like to call the Life Bard. The basic strategy behind this build is going to be healing, support, crowd control, and maybe possibly a summoner. Um, this build is kind of an older build, um, but there have been some recent changes which made some of the spells that you could choose obsolete, such as Aura of Vitality, and so I thought I would go over the um, multi-class um, to reflect those changes. So far as classes, I chose like Life Cleric of the first level, Lore Bard of the 19th level. Since uh, this um, build has a uh, Lore Bard in it, um, it means you can chop spells from any um, spellcasting class and make them Lore Bard spells for them. Um, it makes it really flexible and with the flexibility I added more than one race so that way um, you you can change reflect upon your playstyle that you want to do because this is such a flexible build so so far as races I chose tiefling, human, or half elf for half elf for racial traits you pick up plus two to charisma plus one to any two other skills dark vision immunity to sleep and advantage versus being charmed two skills and one extra language. For Tiefling, we gain plus two to Charisma, plus one to Intelligence, Dark Vision, Hellish Resistance, which is resistance to fire, Infernal Legacy, which gives us the Thaumaturgy Cantrip, Hellish Rebuke, and Darkness at the later levels, and Human, plus one to all stats and one extra language, but if you choose the variant, you get plus two or plus one to any two abilities and proficiency in one skill and a feat. So far as important abilities for the Life Cleric, we get um, our bonus proficiency at the first level for heavy armor, so we can wear heavy armor. And also at the first level, we gain Disciple of Life. When you use a spell of first level or higher to restore hit points to a creature, the creature gains an extra two plus the spell's level in hit points. That's the whole reason why multiclassing into this is because you become an effective healer and by adding Disciple of Life and the ability to chop any spell from any class and the bon a bonus proficiency to heavy armor. All right, let's get into the main abilities for the Lore Bard. Um, we gain our Bardic Inspiration dice at the first level. You use a bonus action to give a creature a Bardic Inspiration dice to use on an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw within 10 minutes. You regain these dice at the end of the long rest. The dice are 1d6 at level 1. At second level, we gain Jack of All Trades. Add half your proficiency bonus rounded down to any ability check you make that doesn't have your proficiency bonus. Second level, Song of Rest. Um, whenever you or anybody that can hear your performance regains hit points at the end of a short rest, or uses hit dice to regain hit points, they regain an extra 1d6 hit points. Expertise at the third level. Double your proficiency bonus with any two skills of your choice if you are already proficient in the skill. At the 10th level you get to choose another two skills. At the 3rd level we gain bonus proficiencies for Lore Bard. You gain proficiency with three skills of your choice. Also at the 3rd level we gain Cutting Words. When a creature you can see within 60 feet of you makes an attack roll, an ability check, or a damage roll, you can use your reaction to expend a Bardic Inspiration to roll it and subtract the roll from the attack roll, ability check, or damage roll. Um, I usually either target attack roll or damage roll depending on, on what kind of attack it is. If it's like a a spell that's, or if it's going to be in a, something that's going to hit more than one pe person, I would usually at attack the damage rolls to shrink the amount of damage that it does for an area attack. But if it's a big solid single hit, I would attack the attack roll and try to make it miss. At the fifth level, we gain Fawn of Inspiration. We replenish our Bardic Inspiration dice on a short rest. At the fifth level, um, we gain a boost to our Bardic Inspiration dice. 
um, the dice is a 1d8 at the 5th level. At the 6th level, we gain Counter Charm. You begin a performance as an action that gives you and anyone within 30 feet advantage from being charmed. At the 6th level, we gain additional magical secrets, which is the bread and butter behind this build. You can learn two spells of your choice from any class. The spells you choose must be of a level you can cast or a cantrip, and the chosen spells count as bard spells for you, but these spells don't count against your spells known. At the ninth level, we get a boost to our Song of Rest. It turns to a 1d8 hit points, or replenishes 1d8 hit points of dice. At the tenth level, we gain a boost to our uh, expertise again. You get to choose another two skills. At the tenth level, we gain magical secrets. You choose two spells from any class, and those spells become bar spells for you and are included in your spells known. This one, additional mag magical secrets was not included in the spells known, but a magical secrets are. But this gives you an additional two spells from anyone. At the tenth level, Bardic Inspiration gets a boost, and it turns to a 1d10. We also, at the thirteenth level, we gain Song of Rest, which gives us another boost. It boosts the die to 1d10. At the 14th level, we gain Peerless Skill. When you make an ability check, you can expend one use of Bardic Inspiration to roll it and add the number roll to your ability check. You can do so after you roll the die, but before the DM has decided whether you succeed or fail. At the 14th level, Magical Secrets get to choose another two spells from any any list. At the 15th level we gain a boost to our Bardic Inspiration which turns to 1d12s. At the 17th level another boost to the Song of Rest which turns to a 1d12. And then lastly at the 18th level we gain Magical Secrets again. So far as skills, any skill you yeah, would be good for this build. You can uh, you gain so much, so many pluses and double proficiency bonuses and in, into anything that it doesn't matter what skills you choose. You could probably be pretty decent at at succeeding about anything that you focused on. So um, any skill will work. So far as background, you can pick up urchin for for these tools. Acolyte or Outlander. For saves, since we went first with the uh, Life Cleric, I would we picked up Wisdom and Charisma for our saves. So far as stats, we want to focus all into Charisma. Our secondary stats going to be Wisdom, and then lastly, we're want, we're going to want just enough uh, strength to be able to hold heavy armor. So far as spells. Starting with cantrips, guidance, light, mending, sacred flames, spare the dying, thaumaturgy, toll the dead, blade ward, dancing lights, friends, light, mending, message, minor illusion, and prestidigitation. Now you'll notice here on the first level spells, I've marked uh, the concentration spells with a C and the rituals with an R so that you'll know which ones are concentration and which ones are rituals. Bane, charm person, comprehend languages, cure wounds, detect magic, disguise self, dissonant whispers, earth tremor, fairy fire, feather fall, healing word, heroism, identify, illusory script, and long strider, sleep, Tasha's hideous laughter, and thunder wave. For the second level, blindness, deafness, Calm Emotions, Cloud of Daggers, Crown of Madness, Detect Thoughts, Enthrall, Heat Metal, Hold Person, Invisibility, Lesser Restoration, Phantasmal Force, See Invisibility, Shatter, and Suggestion. For the third level, Bestow Curse, Dispel Magic, Enemies Abound, Fear, Glyph of Warding, Hypnotic Pattern, Non-Detection, Sending, Speak with dead, speak with plants, and stinking cloud. 
for the fourth level. Charm Monster, Compulsion, Confusion, Dimension Door, Freedom of Movement, Greater Invisibility, Hallucinatory Terrain, Locate Creature, and Polymorph. For the fifth level, Animate Objects, Awaken, Dominate Person, Dream, Gaius, Greater Restoration, Hold Monster, Legend Lore, Mass Cure Wounds, Mislead, Modify Memory, Planar Binding, Raise Dead, Scrying, Seeming, Skill Empowerment, Synaptic Static, Teleportation Circle. For the sixth level, Eye Bite, Find the Path, Guards and Wards, Mass Suggestion, Auto's Irresistible Dance, Programmed Illusion, and True Seeing. For the seventh level, Etherealness, Force Cage, Mirage, Mordekainen's Magnificent Mansion, Mordekainen's Sword, Project Image, Regenerate, Resurrection, Symbol, and Teleport. For the eighth level, Dominate Monster, Feeble Mind, Glibness, Mind Blank, Power Word Stun. For the ninth level, Foresight, Mass Polymorph, Power Word Heal, Power Word Kill, a Psychic Scream, and True Polymorph. So far as feats, Warcaster is a great feat. Um, healer for um, extra healing without using uh, um, spell slots after each fight and along paired with the Song of Rest makes a pretty good feat. And Magic Initiate. <clears throat> the basic, basic premise behind Magic Initiate is going to be to pick up any um, cantrips that you may want um, because uh, the lore bard basically using charisma as a, as a spell casting mod um, will basically be able to pick up a lot of spells through the warlock the sorcerer and the paladin list so far as to pick up can well paladins won't kick cantrips but um, to pick up any cantrips that they may want that they probably don't already get since we already have a cleric and a bard mixed into this so there's not very many cantrips that we couldn't pick up with a magic initiate and I would use that instead instead of wasting um, an actual um, additional magical secret on gaining a cantrip so far as uh, equipment, magical instruments help. Um, anything that boosts your saving throws or um, your defense. Flavor, a performer who turned to the church for some reason, whatever reason that may be. A clergyman that left the church for a reason. Um, he got into a fight or their, their philosophical uh, viewpoints were not in line and so he decided to leave the church. An orphan who became a performer that was raised as a church. Um, he may not be as exactly classical trained, but in lore bar fashion, you chopped what you knew and what you could see. So far as build tactics, um, I'm going to get into magical secrets choices. Um, I've, since this is going to be more of a team support build, I've kind of highlighted the choices that I thought would be would make a better team support choices, but a lot of some of the other choices could be good choices as well. For the sixth level, Fireball, Lightning Bolt, Mind Spike, Spirit Guardians, Scorching Ray, Sonolic Snowball Swarm, Thunder Step, Counter Spell, Protection from Energy, Blur, Bark Skin, Mirror. <clears throat> mirror image, revivify, shield, shield of faith, aura of vitality, mass healing word, healing spirit, good berry, fine steed, fine familiar, and haste. Now I wanted to go back. Generally, I um, whenever I played this build, I would roll with counter spell and one other healing spell. Um, I would probably go with either mass healing wound or mass healing word, sorry, and uh, healing spirit. But you could revivify also makes a good choice if you don't have another cleric in the party. Um, 
healing spirit the reason why I chose it over aura of vitality is it does almost this is the exact same thing as aura of vitality does except for you can boost the amount of healing done by spending higher level spell slots so um, healing spirit makes a better choice in this build um, some of the other choices that you could choose, like Fireball, I mean, um, the, uh, the Bard really doesn't get a lot of hard-hitting spells, and usually what I do is I'll choose a um, spell that I can either fire at the enemy or sit there and chip away at them, that, and it doesn't necessarily have to do a lot of damage, but as long as you're putting damage on the board and healing at the same time, um, especially whenever if you picked a mass healing word you could cast the mass healing word and still attack something so um, <clears throat> but basically I would probably go so far as the the healer in the support role with counterspell and healing spirit for the tenth level reverse gravity contingency sunbeam wall of force big B's hands circle of power Destructive Wave, Cone of Cold, Reincarnate, Swift Quiver, Storm Sphere, and Banishment. Um, Wall of Force being able to cut off a big enemy from hurting your party is just almost a must-have ability if you're going to be running a, a support character. Also, Banishment being able to send away a big baddie um, so that he can't hurt your party for a good long period of time um, is also another really good ability to have. For the 14th level, Reverse Gravity, simul Simulacrum, Contingency, Sunbeam, Disintegrate, and Divine Word. At the 18th level, Wish, Maze, Meteor Swarm, and Clone. Um, wish, um, that's almost a no-brainer here in this spot. Um, you can go Meteor Swarm for Giggles or M Maze again. I mean, uh, just for the, the control abilities. Maze would do pretty good as well. Alright, let's get into some of the numbers for Spirit of Healing. If you cast Spirit of Healing with a 7th level spell slot, it would do 66 plus 9. And um, the reason why you get the plus 9 is from the, the um, Disciple of Life feature. And since um, it is a concentration spell and you get to cast it every six seconds for a minute, you get ten casts out of it, which gives us about an average of 270 damage healed. With an eighth level spell, it's a average of 310 damage healed. With a ninth level spell slot, you can heal an average of 350 damage. If you can get somebody else in your party to cast Beacon of Hope, because it's a concentration and you can't cast both at the same time, um, you can heal 450 damage with a 7th level spell, you could heal 520 damage with an 8th level spell, and 590 damage with a 9th level spell. So that's why this, um, this whole spell right here is superior to Aura of Vitality, because you can actually boost it and spend higher level spell slots to make it heal more. Alright guys, um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if there's any builds you'd like to see me do, don't forget to put them down in the comments, and I will see you guys later.